And that particular class of chemicals is a systemic chemical, meaning it's absorbed by the plant and exhibited in every single part of the plant as the plant grows. So it comes out in the pollen and in the nectar. So any bees or any insect feeding on that pollen and nectar is going to be impacted by those chemicals. So just a couple of additional tips. You know, the insect motels that uh, Douglas creates, everyone is unique. They're a great little piece of artwork for your garden. They're very functional, they actually have a purpose, they're doing something. We've been creating them for about 12 months now. We've got some really, really lovely feedback from people who have installed them in their garden, coming back and telling us that the holes are filling up. And in fact, we had one lady, she came back and she bought two more of them because all the holes in hers were already full. <laughs> Sometimes people say to me, oh, what about wasps? Isn't it wasps going into them? Well, some wasps may go into dead wood. But what we have observed with the bee motels is they tend to be used by different species of native bees. What I've read as well, just in doing my research, that it's not uncommon for a native bee to actually use an old tunnel that may have been used by a wasp in the past. Because there's already claim that the bee actually doesn't have to do as much work. One of my favourite bees is a leaf cutter bee. Leaf cutter bees are used, there's two types of leaf cutter bees on the poster. They're quite amazing what they do. They actually use their mandibles and they cut a beautiful semicircle out of a leaf and they hold it between their legs. And to watch a video of them flying with this piece of leaf is quite amazing. But they carry it between their legs flying back to the tunnel that they've chosen and they line that tunnel with leaf material. They put the eggs in, put the pollen in and they seal the end off with leaf material. It's just absolutely amazing. I just Google that control traits down on the What was that, sorry? Like a control trait. Oh yeah. Oh cool. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Something just to mention with the insect hotels, they are artificial obviously, because we're creating them. We're doing something to try and support the pollinators, but they're still artificial. And just a, something to be mindful of, I've noticed people starting to do them in many, many countries. And if you Google it, you'll see pictures of them in so many different countries. It's wonderful. But people sometimes seem to think bigger is better. And I've seen huge big walls of insect motels with all sorts of stuff. Lots and lots of bogs and holes, board and things like that. What I've read is that when we tend to build things really large like that, it just opens it up for more possibilities of other types of pests and diseases to potentially be a problem with the developing insects and bees. So it's a far better idea to have some small the motel installations in different areas around your property. Spread it out. Yeah. If there is anybody who's looking to put the native sugar bag beehives on their property, I can give you the name of that old Raven's home who is actually doing that. His name is Bob Matthews and he is able to supply for a fee, he's able to supply the native sugar bag beehives. So I've got his contact details. And um, a lot of wonderful information on the internet as well from a website called Sugar Bag Bees, which is um, developed as a company developed by Tim who is quite an incredible expert in the native bee area, particularly the, the sugar bag bee. So I think that's about it. Um, something that I'd just like to mention too, for me personally, in my journey of discovering these native bees, it's actually helping me to develop more of a connection with nature, because I'm a lot more interested in finding out more about them and looking for them now. Uh, it's not unusual for me to go into the garden and just sit beside 
the honeybee basil and just sit and watch and see what's pollinating those flowers. The property that we are currently residing on, we've been able to identify seven different species of native bee and six of those are solitary. So there's a lot of native bees around. Um, another little interesting piece of information is that Australia is the home to the smallest native bee. I think I might have put it in the notes here for people. It's got quite a long scientific name and I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. But of that particular genre, there are about 90 different species of this particular type of small bee. And they range in size from 1.8 millimetres to 2.5 millimetres. So quite uh, understandably, I suppose, people might see these and things buzz around just sitting there on the fly. But in actual fact, they could be a very valuable little bee that's going about pollinating the new world. So, you know, let's look at ways to make our properties more pollinator friendly because we really, really need them. They're part of that whole system that Adam talked about earlier. Very, very important part of that. Thanks very much.